It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. Larry Lasseur of the CBS television news staff and Kenneth Kramer, executive editor of Business Week magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Charles R. Sly, Jr., president of the National Association of Manufacturers. Mr. Sly, upon your election in 1953 as the president of the National Association of Manufacturers, you pledged industries wholehearted cooperation with the Eisenhower administration. Have you had any occasion to change your views? No, I think we uh, want very much to cooperate with the Eisenhower administration. Uh, that does not necessarily mean, of course, that we're going to agree with everything they do. Uh, NAM uh, sets certain policies uh, which it wishes to follow uh, based on principles which we believe are sound and uh, we believe in going straight down the line for those principles. Uh, once in a while, we uh, don't happen to agree with the administration, as uh, was the case in connection with the excess profits tax. But we would like to cooperate with any administration uh, in office in this country to build a greater America. Well, may I ask you, sir, what about the, president, the present administration's plans to lower tariffs? Well, now you're on a subject that I can't talk about very well because NAM has no position on tariffs. Uh, we find that our members have such uh, widely divergent opinions and views because of the different uh, businesses in which they're connected that uh, we don't feel NAM can speak effectively for its over 20,000 members on uh, the matter of tariffs. Some of our people want high tariffs, some low. And we feel that uh, because of the widely divergent opinions, we cannot have a position on tariffs as such. But if we don't lower tariffs, what can uh, Europe and Asia do to keep their economies healthy, sir? Well, as I say, we have no position on tariffs. I think there are other matters in connection with foreign trade which are important. I think uh, that many things can be done to help Europe help itself. I've been very much encouraged uh, recently to uh, read about the meeting of the six powers in Western Europe, Holland, Belgium, uh, Luxembourg, Italy, West Germany, and France. Uh, I understand their meeting to try to break down the economic barriers which now exist between their countries and allow a free flow of goods and services and people uh, within their borders. I think uh, any such uh, breakdown of those economic barriers and uh, making a united whole out of those six countries will do a very great deal to promote the economic well-being of Europe. And I think uh, other steps along that same line should be taken if Europe is going to grow strong economically. Now, Mr. Sly, another subject of considerable importance is taxes. People who do their Christmas shopping early, I think, have already uh, been renewed uh, to the idea that there are some terrific excise taxes imposed on certain goods. Is it true that the NAM wants to have even more excise taxes imposed? <laughs> no, uh, uh, we, we believe that the present excise tax system is a veritable hodgepodge of discrimination. Do you mean luxury taxes, sir, when you say uh, that? Some people call them luxury taxes, but uh, I don't think any of us here tonight would agree that an electric light bulb is a luxury, and yet electric light bulbs are taxed at 20%. Uh, the people that drive their cars to work in this country today are uh, in the millions, and they need those cars. I don't think cars are luxuries, and yet they're taxed at 7%. I could go down a long list of uh, literally thousands of items that are now subject to excise taxes. We think that uh, all those excise taxes, which we believe are discriminatory, uh, should be done away with entirely and that in place of those taxes, not a new tax, but in place of those discriminatory excise taxes, we should impose a flat rate manufacturer's excise tax on all manufactured products except food and food products and except uh, liquor and tobacco, which historically in this country have been taxed separately. And we feel that uh, liquor and tobacco should continue to be taxed separately. Now, it happens that uh, 
a flat rate tax of approximately 5% on uh, the manufactured goods would bring in the same amount of revenue as is now being brought in through the very highly discriminatory taxes which are now in effect. Well, isn't the problem of this administration to raise additional revenues and if you take away the uh, luxury taxes you and replace it with a general manufacturer's tax, would that bring in additional revenues or just make up for what has been lost out of the luxury tax? It would not bring in any additional revenues. My fear is that the present discriminatory system will not continue to bring in what it is now bringing in. I think there are very uh, definite indications of that fact. For instance, last year the movie uh, industry very nearly got their uh, admissions tax removed. Under our plan, all admission taxes would be removed. All services would be removed from taxation. Today, of course, telephones, telegraph, uh, transportation of persons, transportation of freight, and many other services are taxed. We would do away with all those service taxes. You, you mentioned uh, discrimination. I've often heard it said that if you put in a across-the-board excise tax or a general sales tax, that that would be discriminatory against people in the lower income brackets. That uh, is commonly said. Uh, I don't believe is it, it is true? true. No, I don't think it is. Uh, you see, we would exempt food and food products. We would exempt all services. The uh, over 50 percent, in fact, I've uh, seen figures that indicate it's as high as 65 percent of the expenditures of the low and middle income groups uh, are made up of uh, food and food products and services such as rent and so on. And uh, those things under our plan would be exempt. And uh, actually, uh, we find that the low and middle income groups would not pay any more in the aggregate than they're paying today. Well, who would bear the burden of, of such taxes, Mr. Sly? Wouldn't the uh, retailers add their markup on top of the tax? I'm glad you mentioned that. And I might point out uh, this applies not only to excises. It applies to every type of tax of which we can think people pay taxes. They always will. And the idea that a corporation uh, can pay without hurting any people is a fallacy. In other words, some people unfortunately think that because a, a tax is applied to a corporation that some way or other the brick and mortar and machinery are going to pay the taxes. People pay the taxes. Either the employees are going to be penalized, the management, the owners, or the consumers when corporation taxes are applied. And people are always going to pay taxes, and they will pay consumption taxes or consumer taxes. Well, would well. you be re removing the taxes from the corporations and passing them on to the consumer this way? No, we don't. Uh, we, we don't uh, plan to do that at all. We merely replace the present discriminatory taxes with a fair and equitable distribution of the present excise tax load. You see, today, we truly have a hidden excise tax system, because uh, I doubt whether uh, any one of our audience realizes that there are today thousands, literally thousands of items that are taxed. And uh, the, the rates range from 465 thousandths of a cent a pound on sugar up to 25 percent on many items. Uh, that is truly a hidden system because nobody can keep track of all the taxes they're forced to pay. But a 5 percent excise tax, flat rate, on all manufactured products except food and food products would be a tax that everyone would know about. It would not be a hidden tax at all. Well, may I it, ask it, you just what the difference is between a general sales tax and an excise tax? I think the main difference would be the point at which it was levied. In other words, a general sales tax is commonly thought of as being levied at the retail level, while the excise tax, generally speaking, is considered to be applied at the manufacturer's level. Are you in favor then of uh, having lower income taxes and put more of the burden on, on the excise tax arrangement? Uh, no, uh, we are in favor, as I say, of replacing the revenue now brought in through the discriminatory system by a flat rate tax. Now, I will say this, that if it was uh, possible later on to reduce income taxes or to reduce taxes in general, I think that uh, the first step probably should be the reduction of income taxes 
rather than a reduction of excise taxes. Are you in favor of the planned reduction in income taxes that I believe is supposed yes, to take effect very next definitely, year? Yes, very definitely. Mr. Sly, the cost of living is going up, as we've seen by the recent indexes, and it looks as though labor will be asking for uh, more money. Uh, do you manufacturers propose any changes in the Taft-Hartley law? Well, we believe that uh, the Taft-Hartley law, generally speaking, has been a good labor law. We think it can be a much better labor law than it has been through uh, fair and impartial administration. Uh, I do think that uh, it should be pointed out that uh, it, it is only fair that there not be any monopoly in our economy, whether it be in business or in government or in labor. Well, as a final and question, Mr. Sly, I'd like to ask you, Something. You started your own furniture business, I know, in the depth of the Depression. Do you feel we're on the verge of a recession now? No, I certainly do not. Uh, and I uh, decry those prophets of doom that are always trying to uh, predict us into a recession or a depression. I can remember back in 1943, uh, one of the labor leaders of this country predicted that immediately after World War II, there would be 15 million unemployed people in this country. Now, that has never come about, fortunately, and I see no reason today with the tremendous growth that lies uh, before this country for any uh, marked recession or deep depression. I think the main danger is psychological, and I think that if we will uh, work for the future that we can attain, we will attain it, and uh, I certainly ho uh, hope we do. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Sly. It's been a pleasure you. to have you here tonight. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry LeSeur and Kenneth Kramer. Our distinguished guest was Charles R. Sly, Jr., president of the National Association of Manufacturers. <coughs> If you're contemplating the purchase of a very fine watch as a Christmas gift, it would be profitable to compare the facts you have about Longines watches with the facts you have about any other timepiece. And the facts about Longines are convincing proof that in a Longines watch, you have one of the world's very finest watches. In competition with the world's best watches, Longines watches have won for excellence and for elegance 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes and 28 Gold Medals. For accuracy, highest honors from the leading government observatories. For dependability, a position of leadership in sports, aviation, and in science. And yet, though Longines is one of the very finest watches made anywhere in all the world, a Longines watch is not excessively expensive. For you may buy and proudly give a Longines watch this Christmas for as little as seventy-one fifty. And this is important. Whatever the price of the Longines watch you select, it is manufactured to the high standard of excellence which has made Longines the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored Christmas gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor watches. There is only one Atmos, the perpetual motion clock created by Lecoultre. Atmos runs without winding, without electricity, powered only by unfailing daily variations in the temperature of the air. Atmos, product of Lecoultre, division of Longines Whitnor. This is the CBS Television Network.